Since time immemorial, humans have been directly or indirectly influenced by the oceans. The influence of oceans on weather and climate is of paramount importance. Ocean is also important for its natural resource, floral and faunal biodiversity, and as the medium of mass transportation. Increase in the rate of sea level rise is attributed to ocean thermal expansion, glacier melting, and increased melting of the polar ice sheets. The effect of sea level rise is likely to result in wide economic, cultural, and ecological repercussions such as loss of habitats, biodiversity, and natural resources. India, having a large coastline with a vast coastal population, is equally vulnerable to the sea level rise. India is bounded by water on three sides. The Indian coastline runs over a distance of approximately 7,500 kilometers, distributed along nine coastal states, two groups of islands, and four union territories. The coastal zone comprises of a wide range of ecosystems, including mud flats, sandy beaches, mangroves, and coral reefs. Out of the four metro cities, three are located on coastal areas, which plays major role in the economic development of the country. Presently, Indian coastline is facing increased human pressures and exploitation of marine resources. Increase in intensity of tropical cyclones and resulting storm surge would significantly enhance the vulnerability of populations living in cyclone-prone coastal regions of India. Given that many of the impacts of climate change on India's coastal zone are irreversible, continuous monitoring of coastal and open oceans is required to enhance the resilience and adaptation potential of these areas. The Indo-French Saral mission is the right step in this direction. The paucity of in-situ observations in most of the oceans have resulted in intense need for satellite-based observations. Satellite data have proved to be extremely useful when used in numerical models along with in-situ data giving birth to the concept of integrated oceanography for operational purposes. Satellite altimeter is one of the most important instruments for the realization of this concept. Its importance in capturing the dynamics of the ocean is now considered as a global sea level gauge continuously monitoring the global sea level an application which has become ever more prominent in times of climate change. Present altimeters with a precise orbit determination and improved range measurements measure the average global sea level rise with an accuracy of a few millimeters per year. Altimetry is a mature and great success story for satellite-based Earth observation. The Indian Space Research Organization's vision to forage deeper into global ocean remote sensing by altimetry is blossoming with soon to be launched Saral Altica. This joint mission with the French space agency CNES is going to add yet another dimension to our long-standing partnership in Earth observations. We are made to satellite along with the cooperation from CNES France uh, to keep the satellite mainframe uh, to be done from ISRO and uh, applications uh, uh, are payloads uh, from uh, TENES. Satellite altimetry works on the principle of ranging as commonly used in radar, hence also called radar altimetry, in which the altimeter transmits a radar pulse downward towards the targeted sea surface and receives the reflected pulse signal. From the transit time of the two-way signal, the satellite to surface distance, also called range, is calculated. Simultaneous measurement of the satellite orbit altitude yields sea surface height, which in turn gives the ocean dynamic topography. It is very much essential for getting the data of ocean topography. Like we have on the land hills and dales, in the ocean also there are up and down. This up and down of the ocean measurement is called ocean topography. And for getting the ocean topography and also to measure the sea surface roughness, the wave heights are measured by this payload. These parameters are very important for the climate. 
the engineering realization of this simplified altimetry principle is achieved with a series of onboard payloads and ground-based instruments. SARAL is an acronym for satellite with Argos and Altica, with two payloads, namely Altica, a car band radar altimeter, and Argos. Argos is a data collection platform for a variety of physical and biological data from ocean in situ instruments like ocean buoys, collecting data like wind speed, wind direction, sea surface temperature, salinity, wave heights, currents, etc. This data complements the altimeter data for ocean, atmosphere, and climate studies. Saral realizes ocean radar altimetry through a suite of altimetry payloads which includes the Doris and LRA instruments for precise orbit determination, a dual frequency radiometer at 24 and 37 gigahertz for the wet troposphere correction. However, it is to become a forebearer of many innovative concepts and technologies in satellite radar altimetry with a first of its kind single frequency car band radar pulse at 35 gigahertz as the altimetry signal. The advantages being the negligible ionospheric contamination of the pulse echo, better vertical resolution for wave estimation, and a compact, lightweight instrument for greater portability. Space segment of Saral mission includes ISRO developed IMS2 satellite bus for payload integration, and CNS developed Altica and Argos payloads. IMS2 satellite bus is developed by ISRO for satellites of up to 450 kg class. Saral is the first mission using this bus. The satellite is a three-axis stabilized looking towards the Earth as it makes 14 orbits per day around the Earth at a height of about 800 kilometers going from pole to pole. This takes about 100 minutes to make one orbit around the Earth. The solar panels that are in folded condition while going on the rocket get deployed automatically after Saral satellite is released into orbit. The deployed solar panels always keep facing the sun in the current dawn to dusk orbit. Orbital plane is perpendicular to the sun rays. These solar panels can generate about 850 watts power continuously while the satellite bus consumes about 200 watts, the Altica and Argos payloads consume 250 watts continuously. Thus, the payloads can do measurements of all the oceans of the whole world. As the payloads are on, the data is continuously collected and transmitted to the ground station every 100 minutes throughout the day and all days in a year and for full satellite life of more than five years. Thus, Saral would be an important observer in oceans and climate monitoring systems of the world. The ground segment includes a series of pre-launch activities and the post-launch operations for satellite control and health monitoring that are the sole responsibility of ISRO. The data reception will be carried out at ISRO's NRSC National Remote Sensing Center at Hyderabad. The archival and dissemination will be shared between ISRO for users in India through its data disseminating system MOSDAC at Space Application Center Ahmedabad and the French CNES for outside India. Saral will be launched from Satish Dhawan Space Center at Sri Harikota by ISRO's workhorse launch vehicle PSLV C20. Saral will be launched in a sun synchronous near circular polar orbit at an inclination of 98.5 degrees at an apogee altitude of 800 kilometers, ensuring it monitors the same part of the ocean every 35 days. The main passenger for PSLV C20 is Saral satellite comprising of French payloads, Altica and Argos. It also carries six other co-passenger satellites. The Sapphire satellite of 148 kgs built by MDA Canada with the primary objective to deploy an operational, acceptable space-based surveillance, 14 kg Unibright satellite by Austria to measure low-level oscillation and temperature variation in stars, while another satellite, Bright, from Austria, is to make photometric observation of some bright stars in the sky. The smallest satellite, AUSAT-3, 
weighing just 3 kgs will study the feasibility of studying AIS signals from ships in Arctic region. Strand 1, a 6.5 kg satellite built by UK based company to evaluate the performance of COTS mobile phone electronics in a space environment. The NEOSAT is a small Canadian satellite which will have a 15 cm aperture but highly capable telescope. This new initiative of satellite altimeter at car band, enabling better observations of open oceans, coastal zones and inland waters due to high horizontal and vertical resolution, calls for dedicated efforts by scientists for harnessing its benefits. Radar altimetry addresses a number of science and application areas such as tropical cyclone formation, monitoring of El Nino and the Indian Ocean Dipole, applications in fisheries, offshore hydrocarbon and mineral resources exploration, study of tectonics and related offshore oceanic processes, polar science studies, land hydrology, river lake monitoring etc. are other promising areas of satellite altimetry. Besides these areas of applications, the assimilation of altimeter-derived ocean information in numerical models serves the purpose of forecasting of ocean state parameters. The primary advantage of Saral as far as we are concerned is getting into a new area and it's a new frequency so there is also going to be a lot of new validation activities which will come up and we are also proud that because this is the first satellite in the world which will have which will be operating in this frequency and India will be contributing to the studies related to Cobb and um, altimeter systems and we have also developed algorithms and techniques for making use of this altimeter data in our own ocean models. So we are looking forward eagerly to the successful launch of this and then make use of this data for various applications on ocean modeling. With this mission, Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, crosses another milestone with Saral in its commitment to serve for the betterment of mankind through space technology and its applications.